Hello and welcome to What's in the Night Sky for December 2020. We've got two events not to be missed this month. The first is the Geminids Meteor Shower and the second is the Great Conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. We're also going to talk about the Beehive Cluster, the constellation of Gemini and how to spot the International Space Station. Let's start by taking a look at the Moon. So here we are on the 1st of December. I'm just going to go into the later part of the evening. So we're on around half past 11 at the moment. You can see the moon is nice and high. If we zoom in and have a look, you'll see that it's just past full and is going to be waning towards new moon for the first half of the month. If we move on for a few days, you'll see that process happening. So by the time we get to the fourth, we have a gibbous moon. And if we just go into the early hours of the 5th and pause there and just take a look at the moon with a pair of binoculars and you might see that there is a star cluster in the constellation of Cancer just below the moon which I'm ringing with my mouse now and that is the Beehive Cluster and the Beehive Cluster is an open cluster that is one of the closest open clusters to the Earth. It's been known to us since ancient times and with the naked eye it usually appears as a fuzzy patch if you are at a dark enough location. On the 5th of December you are unlikely to be able to spot it with your naked eye so you will need a pair of binoculars because it's so close to the moon but if you haven't seen it before its proximity to the moon is a good thing because it can just help you to find it really easily. Um, so look out for the moon and the beehive cluster on the morning of the 5th. If we move on now to the 12th of December and in the early morning again, so I'm going to actually go to about 7 o'clock in the morning, so just get up a little bit early for this one. So 7 o'clock in the morning on the 12th of December and you'll see that the moon is quite close to the planet Venus, so a nice opportunity to see these two together. You'll see that the moon is a very thin crescent and that's because it is waning towards new and it's going to be new moon on the 14th so just a couple of days before new moon here and new moon being on the 14th this month is very handy for the Geminids meteor shower which I'm going to talk about in a few minutes so crescent moon and the planet Venus if you do have a telescope you can take a look at Venus through the telescope and see that Venus is showing a gibbous phase on the morning of the 12th. And full moon this month occurs on the 29th of December. Um, so just before, um, let's just go back to the evening again. Just before the new year we will have a full moon on the 29th. Let's take a look at the planets now. So I'm going to just take us back to the 1st of December in the early evening around 6 o'clock. And if we look to the southwest, you will see that Jupiter and Saturn are here appearing quite low to the horizon. And if we move onwards, even by an hour, you'll see that Jupiter and Saturn are starting to set. So if you would like to observe Jupiter and Saturn this month, you need to get out nice and early, just after the sun has set, um, and look low to the horizon in the southwest to be able to spot them. As the month goes on, they will set earlier and earlier, so the best opportunity to see them at their highest is at the beginning of the month. If we move time onwards, you can see that Mars is visible for most of the night, still looking quite good following its opposition that took place quite recently. And if we keep going into the early hours of the morning, you'll see that Venus is rising around 6 o'clock. So opportunities to observe Jupiter, Saturn, Mars and Venus this month if you would like to. And I'm just going to take us back now to the early evening. 
and I said earlier that Jupiter and Saturn are about to undergo a great conjunction this month which is very exciting and these um, great conjunctions where Jupiter and Saturn appear close together in the night sky from our vantage point occur every 20 years or so but this one is really special because it is the closest approach since the year 1623 um, so almost 400 years since they've appeared this close together um, there are no records of telescopic observations occurring in 1623, the telescope having just been invented. So really, this is the first time that we've been able to observe Jupiter and Saturn this close together in the night sky since the invention of the telescope. If we just, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit and let's take a look at how the gap between them closes as we go through the month. So you can see them getting closer and closer um, as the month goes on. Um, so even if the weather is poor on the day of the conjunction, you should still have lots of opportunities to observe them close together before that happens. So here we are on the 21st of December. Um, so that is the day of the Great Conjunction and it is also the winter solstice on the same day. And if you are looking at Jupiter and Saturn with your naked eye on the 21st of December, it is likely that they are going to appear as one object. They'll look like one really bright star. Um, if you have a telescope or a pair of binoculars, you can use those to make, out, make them out as two separate objects. In terms of being able to see them, I would start observing nice and early, um, around half past four, five o'clock. It's going to take us to half past five now just so it's there a little bit higher so start observing around half past four five o'clock and wait for them to pop out of the evening twilight and then you can follow them until you can't see them anymore until they've either set below the horizon or um drop behind some hills or some buildings depending on where you are um the best thing you can do in terms of being able to observe this conjunction well is to find yourself a location with a nice clear southwestern horizon. If we take a look at a view through a telescope, here we go. Um, so this is a magnification of around 250 times. And you can see that with this magnification, you can get both Jupiter and Saturn in the same field of view um, together, which is quite exciting. And I'm just going to take the labels off so there's not so much distraction in the field of view. Um, and you can see with um, in good conditions with this kind of magnification, you can also make out some details, possibly Saturn's rings, possibly the north and south equatorial cloud bands of the planet Jupiter, and um, certainly um, Jupiter and Saturn's large moons you'll be able to make out as well. Um, so any magnification from um, around 150 to 250 times will enable you to see both planets together in the same field of view. And of course, if you want to you can use a higher magnification um, to study them in more detail um, but the thing that's really exciting about this conjunction is observing them both together in the same field of view um, which is something that you won't have the opportunity to do again for quite a long time so moving away from the planets, the other highlight of this month, along with the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn, is the Geminids meteor shower. Um, and the peak of the Geminids meteor shower occurs on the 14th of December, um, in the early hours of the morning on the 14th of December. Uh, so I'm going to take us to just after midnight on the 14th of December. They are the Geminid meteors, so they are appearing to come from the constellation of Gemini. If we put meteor showers on, we can see the radiant of Geminids meteors uh, shower appears next to the head of Castor. And this is a really, really good opportunity, hopefully, if the weather is good, to observe the Geminids because the moon is new on the 14th and um, 
a barrier to seeing lots of meteors when there's a meteor shower is if you have a bright moon in the sky because you want to have a nice dark sky to be able to see the fainter of the meteors. So find yourself a nice dark location um, if you can. If you can't, then um, just go out into your garden or out into the street and you'll still have a really good chance of seeing some meteors. Um, and you can look um, around the... Um, constellation of Gemini or anywhere in that region of sky and see if you can spot um, some of the Geminid meteors. So um, if we are looking just after midnight on the 14th, so early hours of the morning, the 14th, and you can see that we're looking towards the south, southeast here uh, to spot some of those Geminid meteors. And if the weather is poor on the 14th, then don't worry because you will be able to see meteors, Geminid meteors, um, on the days surrounding the 14th as well. Um, and also, as well as it being a new moon, the uh, fact that the radiant is nice and high in the night sky is promising as well for being able to spot plenty of meteors. I thought this would be a good opportunity to have Gemini as our constellation of the month since we are talking about Geminid meteors and you're all hopefully going to be looking in the direction of Gemini on the 14th. Um, so if we put the art on, um, you can see that Gemini are depicted as twins and Gemini is a familiar constellation to most people even if they're not interested uh, particularly in astronomy because it is a constellation of the zodiac and the zodiac being the area of sky that includes the paths of the sun and the moon and the planets. Um, Gemini is Latin for twins and uh, is most often associated with the twins Castor and Pollux um, from Greek mythology and the two bright stars um, representing their heads are named after the two twins. Um, Pollux is a red giant star and has an exoplanet and um, Castor is a multi-star system um, so um, it's a binary but each of its components are also binary making it a four star system and then there's yet another binary a short distance away making it actually a six star system um, which is quite exciting. We've talked already about the beehive cluster this month so I thought I would mention another open cluster um, that if you are in a dark location you might just about be able to see um, with the naked eye it covers an area, a real large area around the size of the full moon. Um, and if you look at it with binoculars, it looks like a cloud containing um, some bright stars. Um, and the cluster is called M35 or the Shubuckle Cluster. Um, and to find it, um, if you draw a line from Betelgeuse, so um, uh, remember the constellation of Orion that we were talking about um, in a previous episode. Um, find the um, red giant star Betelgeuse on Orion's shoulder, so it's an, a nice bright pointer star, um, and draw an imaginary line from Betelgeuse to Pollux, um, so the head of one of the twins. So you've got an imaginary line here, and in the middle of that line somewhere you will find this bright star at the foot of Pollux um, and it's the brightest star along that line so you should hopefully not confuse it with anything else and then um, if you draw another imaginary line to um, from this bright star at the foot to Capella in Auriga uh, and again Capella is a really bright star so hopefully um, you'll be able to spot that quite easily. Uh, and then if you look along that line, you might be able to spot this fuzzy patch, um, the Shubuckle Cluster. And the reason it's called the Shubuckle Cluster is it, uh, because it appears just above Castor's Shubuckle. Uh, so if we zoom in on the shoe of Castor, and here we are at the open cluster M35. Uh, so if you have a pair of binoculars, then um, check out this open cluster with your binoculars. Or if you have a small, a small telescope, then you can have a look at it with a low magnification um, with a small telescope as well. If you would like to have a look out for Santa's sleigh delivering the presents on Christmas Eve, otherwise known as the International Space Station, then 
you will need to get up nice and early in the morning. So let's go to Christmas Eve and let's go to six o'clock in the morning. Uh, so if you get up around six o'clock, head outside uh, for around 6.14 and have a look um, towards the west, then you might see the ISS coming over. So I'm just going to speed up time a little bit and there it goes. So that was quite sped up. So it'll take a few minutes to come over. Um, and there are other non-Christmas Eve opportunities to see the ISS this month as well. Um, there's one on the 5th of December at around five past six in the evening, and there are a few more. Uh, if you want to find out when they are, then have a look at the um, NASA Spot the Station website. Um, and amazingly, the ISS has just celebrated its 20 year anniversary of crewed operations. So um, a, quite a remarkable achievement for all of those people that have been working on the ISS project for all of those 20 years. So that brings me to the end of our night sky tour for December. And I will be back in the new year to talk about what is in the night sky for January 2021.